It feels really good to be back. It just uh, feels a bit weird to, to play after such a long time. It feels really good to play again with uh, Smith and Existence. Uh, I played with them for several years. Even if we are still a, a young team, definitely, and we didn't have that much time of practice, of course, uh, we're gonna come here in London with our heart and gonna give all our best in that way. We don't have almost like zero preparation for this tournament, so we take it as experience. Uh, we were really excited to, to play again, like all the hype and stuff. So yeah, just the excitement and uh, to be there again and to play again uh, on the stage. Donc pour parler maintenant de, de l'équipe, donc euh, je vais retrouver les trois joueurs euh, avec qui j'ai joué chez Ver Games, donc Shock, Smith et Kenny. Euh, donc je suis très heureux de les retrouver et je vais jouer avec un joueur avec qui j'ai encore jamais joué, donc Alex, donc un jeune joueur de, de talent qui a encore beaucoup de choses à apprendre. I am intrigued to know how this game is going to go. What are our expectations? I'm not going to force predictions out of you, but like, as in, do you think this G2 with the practice, with the names, with the you mentioned Smith hasn't played in a year and a half? I mean, uh, are we doubting G2 here? Yeah, we, we, we should be. Like, right. there's nothing that tells us that G2 is going to come in here and, and do well at the first event ever. And it looks like we are ready to play Mirage. You say Smith has been out. Remember, he was the coach, so he has at least been around sure. to some capacity. I'm sure a lot of you are excited to see how this G2 looks. They haven't had much practice. And here comes Sirk as he completely destroys body there. Kenny S will surely follow. And that's going to be a five versus three to kick things off. Oftentimes happens much earlier. Run boost. Sirk takes the bait, fires into it, but that's because Breezy's still nearby, so he's able to get okay. a shot. I'm surprised that didn't hit. Existence gets Sirk down, and it's the advantage to G2. They have to win this pistol. Shocks go towards B. Let's see if NRG can close it out quickly, or G2 at least make it more competitive. First two kills for Shocks. Can he find any more? You better bet he can, as uh, he'll get three kills. And it looks like the round will be going in their favor. It's going to be four versus one. Fugly. At this point, just trying to farm some cash. Or Shout out to the Cloud9 boys. Fine from Kenny. Turns it around, spots Ethan working up as well as he boosted inside the window. He might get them all. That's four. That should be GG here, yeah, and indeed it is. What a disappointing game. Well played to NRG. Didn't seem phased at all with a prospect of playing against these utter legends of the team, or of CSGO in general. And uh, G2, they, you can tell that they need practice. They need some time. This map is not for them. Maybe the Vita didn't go the way they wanted. Uh, it's a difficult veto to be up against when it's just ban, 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 ban. Seven maps in the pool, ends up with something you're not comfortable playing, and RG might have been very smart. They played really good. When you're down like 11, it was not even zero, it was 11-1 or 10-1. Uh, no, like we, we have a really good mentality on this, and we just try to, to do things like we a bit prepared, like just to see if it works and stuff. Uh, almost every time, like energy was playing uh, bets on the all the sites we were attacking, so we were kind of, I don't know if it was obvious or like we will see after when we will be working on it. From yesterday, we just had a speech a debriefing at the end of the match. Like we knew our first match in LAN was going to be hard. And we learned a lot of things yesterday because we didn't go in the match as warm as we should have. Like, I mean, communication and everything. Like, we didn't play too ballsy or aggressive like we should have. Okay, we're in the last map, right? Yeah. You got it. Good luck, guys. Nice. Good luck, man. Yeah. Sure.
Some noise, London. It will be G2 versus Luminosity here in the quarterfinals, battling for a place in the semis. And they've both looked scrappy so far, but we'll see who comes out top here. It's going to be a nice little duel. And G2 finding all the headshots required of those clocks. It's an absolute massacre in the connector. But Yell, he's fighting back. He's at least got the bomb here. Can he find any more? He's going to run out of bullets. And that should be the round. And indeed, that will be it. G2 pick it up. A very fast pistol there, Matt. Not many tactics displayed. And all our brawl towards the underpass. Range. We'll see how fast he is today. Nails alongside with them. Headshot. Oh. Perfect shot from Kent. He reads it so well. And he doesn't extend beyond where he has to. When he does, down goes PKL as well. Kenny's looking back on form. It's encouraging for G2. They've got one more player to find before the A site completely open. And Showtime goes first because he knows he has to pull the round back. Smith's won't allow that at all. Needs to fully defuse the bomb here. Doesn't look like he has a chance. He's starting to flail somewhat, but there's the first frag. Molotov on top of the bomb. But that smoke is absolutely everything. Can go for the defuse. Has got the kit. Two, one. Can Kenny do anything about it? He can. Oh my goodness. Kenny comes in and saves it with one second to spare. But unfortunately, he will be dropped eventually. Four versus four, no kits available, and they're dropping like flies. This position from body is absolutely everything. Looking for the clean sweep, couldn't quite find it at the end, but that's going to be enough to guarantee the round. Oh, he waits from window, smoked off. It's a deep smoke. He may have been able to play that on the ledge and still be able to fall back inside of it, but he commits to getting inside of the site, and rightfully so. He's able to take down neck on arrival. WP for body this time, and Steel falls next. Kenny on the flank. Map done. G2 are going to take Luminosity's pick 16 to 9. presence from G2. Four players in mid, three of them, excuse me, three players in mid, two of them going to push through the garage. Didn't catch shocks over toward B, but that means they're going to wrap around fine on the retake and what a hold inside of the site. They'll get toward the bomb default position now to get it down. Neck the one to do so. Kenny can't defend against that. He just has to stay alive. Good play from Neck as well. Immediately to find a kill afterward. Dink good to body, wow. but he holds it. If that kill went the other way, we might have had a different round because it would have opened up position for Neck to wrap around behind the red crate, start to control the angle and defend the bomb, but it's G2. But the fact he's going to go all the way through there together, though. This is good positioning, but it's the AWP that's left to get the trade, and down he goes. Good shot from Yell. Squeaky, and they're going to swing through main as well, so they've entirely pinched off A, and in doing so, confirmed that there's no aggression there. The problem is they don't have middle, so highway still is an option. Not wow. shocks does that. Boost it up, finds two in reverse. Smiths playing in front of the smoke and here, absolutely everything around him. Nice little position here, considering there's not much time. Can he find the first frag? Certainly can. Damage inflicted to Gordes. Yell as well, and we'll see with this 20 seconds. Luminosity surely can't do anything with this. It's down immediately, good find. And as you say, body, as he backs off to the site as well, finds PKL, oh. and that's just a slaughter. Kenny hits two. Existence left at headshot, has two players approaching together, which means trade potential exists. It is an AWP for Yell. So a possibility that it can still be caught out. Good find on the first, as Existence swings back around, and he'll finally give T2 a round. They don't need to do much at this point in time. They can play the cross, they can play the bomb, and like you say, without the kit, this becomes a massive problem. That guess will go, finds the first, as they look away from the flash, but he's unsuspecting of them both being in the same position. Taps the bomb, which forces the peak, but he's not got much else to play for. 16-11, G2, go 2-0. From this match, Luminosity, we just came and like we played our game, we said, okay, we passed our first land match, everything is gonna be better now, and we had the good debriefing yesterday, and all the communication, the, the tactics were was going better. So I believe FaZe is beatable because they don't have the chemistry they used to have with all of Meister or Exist. They are with a standing now and they, they just played with him for this event, so they don't have much preparation. Uh, it's still going to be a really tough match because they are really good and, and we don't have much preparation right now because the team is not too old. So yeah, it's going to be tough, it's going to be tough, but we can do it.
body again with the smoke and the CZ, and they spot a lot of players going towards Banana, and the body's the one facing actually, so this is the corner of the smoke, but the kills are all flying in here for G2. G2 really in an ideal situation. And if FaZe aren't going to attempt a split, this will be very easy to defend for G2. They're just walking into the crossfires and they're getting slaughtered at the moment. It's just Guardian left and the 1v1. And now Kenny S on 22 health. We saw his troubles earlier in the rounds, but it would have nailed Rain. Oh, that is fantastic from Kenny. We've seen so many highlights from this bomb site from him. This is where there could be a flank. He finds Carrigan first, though, instantly looking. Where is Nico? I'm sure he's lurking somewhere. Nico has to move forward now, trying to bait the shot, and he did bait it, but it cost him everything. FaZe get the plant, but they don't get the round. Round number five for G2. Let's check onto the balcony. Will they hear if he drops off? Oh, boy. There we go. Where are the final two players? Oh, but he will go ahead, not behind. And the flashbang is too deep. A headshot, of course. Above the waist just won't do, it must be the face. Lovely pop flash through the door for a smoke as well, and it is stereo frags. Might even be 5.1 for FaZe. That is game point on Inferno. G2 running out of answers here. Make their way into the retake situation. Shox finds the first one. Carrigan now wants to hold the position. Shox searches for the trade fragger. He finds him. Nico with the orb shot. Wants to swap out a gun. But I'm not sure exactly what happened to Nico there. And my boss on the round though, Nico is still harassing, trying to buy time for Carrigan and he's done enough. Here we go, G2, can they salvage this series? Can they bring themselves to that coveted dust two? And they're gonna go for the A hit straight away and phase. Well, they've dropped Nico straight away, that's a good start. Now how does Carrigan defend from this? He is essentially facing a triple peak, he hears a grenade going off. Both sides flash and he manages to escape and now Kroman is there to clean up. Absolutely disastrous start for G2 in this round. Yeah, and the uh, timing from existence, he came in slightly too late there as well. But how do they deal with Guardian? It's a good question. I don't know if we'll find an answer. Oh, well, Shox is going to be the answer, it seems. A very fast response. Rain also is going to be taken down in the shadow position as the bomb site will be G2's. And once more, it's a success on the A takes. Now it's all eyes on existence. That flank, it has to be successful. That's one frag guard. He's so weak. The orb comes out and he's good again for it as Nico and Guardian look to be in a good spot to defend the bomb. But a nice headshot from Body will take Nico out of the picture. But Guardian doesn't matter how much health he has. If he has an AWP, he's a problem. Shocks will deal with it eventually, but it goes down to the very last man. Being flashed again. But if he peeks, they try to plant default. Oh, Croman was in the red, but there we go. Stereo frags and it's 16 to 10. Phase finally finish off G2, who can now go and try to build a team amongst this new roster. But Phase continue on. We have an ID where we have to put the work, and I think that's the best thing. And definitely having like. Uh, more than two or three weeks of practice will help us growing a lot. We didn't expect much for this tournament, uh, but I think this is satisfying the fact that we have a lot of things to, to work on. Um, so I, I would say that we globally really happy. I mean, the, the, the chemistry in the team is really great. Uh, I haven't experienced that for a while and I'm really happy and we're all really happy to be together.